you all to my channel if this is your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so in today's video i'm going to be making a simple video on how to cut palazzo with flans so first we will achieve our palazzo and we'll also achieve how to cut flans and to attach it to our palazzo so what are the basic measurements required our waist measurements, hip measurements, trouser length, and our round lap. I know you are going to be asking how can you get your flap, but I am going to get that in the course of this video. So our waist measurement is 32 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 2, we have 10.5. Our hip is 39 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1, we have 11.5. Our trouser length is 45. Now, because our palazzo is going to have a band, we are going to go ahead and deduct 2 inches for our band. So we have 45 minus 2 inches, we have 43. And we are going to go ahead and add our strength allowance to it, which is 2 inches. So plus 2 inches, we have 45 inches. Our round lap is 26. So we have 26 divided by 2 we have 13 plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance we have 15 inches now you will discover that for our round lap we divided it by 2 and not by 4 so make sure you don't make the mistake of dividing your round lap by 4 but rather you have to divide your round lap by 2 so don't forget to join us on facebook on our facebook page we have different fashion topics and also on our website, I'm going to put down the details in the description box so you can go ahead and learn. So the first thing we are going to do first is we are going to draft our pattern. I have my pattern paper. Now one thing about this pattern paper is it's about 60 inches long guys and of course this is what I use most of the time. And especially when you want to achieve dresses that requires long length such as today which we have 45 inches, you can achieve it like on a straight line because this pattern paper is about 60 inches long and it comes in a bundle and I am about to exhaust mine already so let's move straight into the pattern please we are going to mark our length so go ahead and mark our length which is 45 inches we mark our line with our pattern master and connect the lines together this is what we have now we are going to go ahead and mark our basic measurement which is waist to hip 9 inches waist to knee 17 and a half inches I'll go ahead and connect the lines together to connect the lines this is what we are going to have so we are going to use our hip measurement which is 11.5 and we are going to divide it by 2 so we can have a box so I'll divide 11.5 by 2 so we'll go ahead and mark what we have we we'll mark it all the way down now once we marked it we'll go in with our pattern master and connect the lines together waist measurement by 2 so for our waist we have 10.5 we divide 10.5 by 2 just fold your tape measure this way into 2 and you have your exact inch so you are going to place it this way so you place it this way mark this part and you also mark what you have now on your waistline 
come down with one inch on your waistline this is going to serve as a flap line so go ahead and connect it together now this is our flap line on this hip line we'll go ahead and mark our hip measurement now because we made use of the hip measurement to divide the box so we are going to have the exact point of the box now on this flap line on the flap line we are going to go ahead and mark our round lap measurement and our round lap we have 13 inches we'll go ahead and mark what we have for our round lap so we have 13 inches plus our sewing allowance we have 15 so this is where we have our round lap which is 15 inches now because it is palazzo i'm going to extend this 15 inches all the way to my trouser length i'll go ahead and mark 15 inches on my trouser length so once we are done with that we'll go in with our pattern master and connect the two round laps together so once you connect it together this is what you have now you will now make use of your arm or curve and connect your round lap measurement to your waist measurement so we'll go ahead and mark this so once you've marked this this is what our front block is going to look like so i'll go ahead and connect this my hip line to where i have i'll go ahead and connect my hip line to where i have my waist line so i'll connect it together once we are done with that i'll go ahead and cut this out this out this is what we are going to have for the front block so we set this aside so for the back block i'm going to place my front block on another pattern paper so i'll go ahead and trace the lines that is where we have um go ahead and trace the lines where we have our hip measurements our round lap flap line i'll go ahead and trace the line where we have our hip measurements our flap our knee length and so the difference between the front block and the back block is that on this flap line we are going to add three inches to our flap line and the reason why we are adding three inches is so that we can have this ease around the back area so we have three inches on the flap line now as we move towards the waist measurements we are going to reduce it but note that this flap line must be three inches so at this point i'll mark two and a half i'll mark two inches so i'll go in with my curve and connect it together line for the back block now on this flap line mark one and a half inches so the back is usually longer than the front with one and a half inches but it is towards the upper part not the lower part so we connect it this way so this is what we will have for the back block now as we decrease towards the foot we will also decrease in our measurement also so on the flap line we use three inches so i'll go ahead and use two and a half two inches one and a half one inch or you can just maintain your two inches all the way to your foot measurement so we'll go ahead and connect this together so after connecting it 
it this is what we are going to have so the difference is basically just an extension in the flap line and also you increase it towards your flap line at the upper part you add to the measurements and you also increase it so i'll go ahead and cut this out so after cutting it out this is what we are going to have for the back block and this is what we are going to have for the front block so go ahead and set this aside so we want to achieve our flaws what we are going to do now is we are going to get a middle point just mark where you want to serve as your midpoint now on this midpoint i'm going to mark two inches round i'll mark two inches two inches so once i mark two inches i'll connect it together So we went ahead to mark our middle point and from the midpoint we marked 2 inches round. Now at this point we are going to increase it with, so we mark 3 inches, 3 inches, 3 inches, 3 inches. So we'll go ahead and connect it this way. Now, when we are moving towards this point again, we will increase it by, so we add one inch, we mark four inches, we mark four inches, four inches, we have four inches, so we'll go ahead and connect this this way. We mark five inches. We mark five inches. Go ahead and mark five inches. Five inches. So we we'll connect connect it together so this is what we have automatically so we just have like a round shape a continuous circle so you can increase it as much as you want or you can reduce it, it depends on what you want to achieve so now I'll go ahead and cut this out cutting it out this is what we are going to have so you can see how it falls let me just hold it this way so you can see how it falls so just a continuous circle so set that aside we're using this african print and african prints are available as a store both in wholesale and in retail prices so i'll go ahead and fold it into two this is what the fabrics look like it's so beautiful so like one piece this is the back block so i'll place my back block on it and the fabric is folded into two i'll go ahead and cut this out this is what we are going to have for the back block we are going to have two pieces for the back block so we set this aside and fold it into two fold it into two we'll place our front block 
block and go ahead and cut this out for the front block we we'll also have two pieces and you can see that the color of the flowers is what we also have on the fabric so we we'll set this aside we we'll fold our fabric into two and the length of our band will be equal to our waist measurement and the width will be two inches plus one inch sewing allowance we have three inches so i'll go ahead and cut it out we are going to have for the band and it's going to be folded into this way and then fold our fabric into four And we'll cut it out for the pocket. I have four pieces for my first thing we are going to do is this is the front block. So on the front block, we are going to mark seven inches for the front, and that is going to serve as our pocket. So we'll take this pocket and we'll stitch it all the way to where we have seven inches start stitching it this is what you are going to have so go ahead and take the back block and also one piece of our pocket you mark seven inches and you stitch it all the way down this is where we have our pockets so we'll go ahead and stitch it all the way down so this is what we are going to have we're fixing the pocket and we've gone ahead to stitch it all the way so the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and close up our pocket so we'll just stitch our pockets just to close it up after closing the pocket this is what you have you can see that the pocket is closed already and this is what we have for the pocket so we we'll set this aside Other part this is where we are going to attach our flounce so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to attach this flounce to this side now i'll take the second piece so our flaws is in between the fabric so we'll go ahead and stitch it all the way down after stitching it that is after stitching where we have our flaws next thing we are going to do is to go ahead and close the pocket so we'll stitch this upper part and we'll close the pocket with that the next thing we are going to do is we are going to stitch so once we are done with that the next thing we are going to do is we are going to stitch the other part so i'll go ahead and stitch it all the way down take the second piece go ahead and stitch it all the way down and you have this is what we are going to have you can see we have one piece and we also have the second piece so we are going to take this middle point and this midpoint so we'll join the two midpoints together and we'll stitch it so we'll stitch it all the way round and make sure that this midpoint the two midpoints meet then once we are done with that you can see that our trousers is almost ready 
so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix in my band now on the band I've ironed paper stay just to give it form of structure so I'll go ahead and stitch this all the way round the band you can see how firm it is because of the paper stay we added to it so by this side I will go ahead and fixing my zip after fixing our zip the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and hem the lower part of our trousers so this is the lower part We'll go ahead and fold it and we'll stitch it all the way round. So this is what the palazzo with flaws at the side looks like. So you can see the flaws effect at the side and this is our palazzo trousers. So let me know what's up you want us to rock with this palazzo and we are going to make a video on that. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.